The Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is the fastest gaming CPU for the Ryzen 5000 series. But recently, AMD released a second X3D chip for the AM4 platform, and I just had to get my hands on it. The only problem is this CPU, which is only available at Micro Center, is also in-store only. So if you're in the US and close enough to one of these locations, is this new CPU worth it? Or is the 5800X 3D still the gaming king? Let's find out. The Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. As of last summer, it was one of the best gaming CPUs available. What makes it so good is AMD has stacked 64 megabytes of additional L3 cache on top of the existing 32 megabytes of the original 5800X. Simple translation, this means lower latency and higher frames per second in your games. These chips were highly sought after and in fact were sold out in many locations all the way through the beginning of this year. The one big problem is the MSRP of the 5800X 3D was $449 US. That's a little out of reach for most mainstream gamers. Well, AMD has been producing these 3D VCash chips for about a year now, and they've amassed a small surplus of CPUs that couldn't quite make the cut as a 5800X 3D. This is where the Ryzen 5 5600X 3D was born. This processor is basically a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with two of its cores disabled. The 5600X 3D has six cores and 12 threads, boosts to 4.4 gigahertz, and includes the same 96 megabytes of L3 cache found on the 5800X 3D. Theoretically, this CPU should have about the same gaming performance as its Ryzen 7 counterpart. But the beauty of it is, it carries an MSRP of $229. Now the 5800X 3D has dropped in price since its release, but has begun to climb again due to its increase in popularity. The cheapest you can grab one currently is on Amazon for $322. Links below in case you want one. Since I had the chance to swing by a micro center and pick up a 5600X 3D for myself, I figured I'd drop it onto my test bench and see how it fares against some of the other AM4 options. If you learned anything new so far, give us a like below and tell your friends about our great content. Also, you might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our helpful tech videos. Let's take a look at the two CPUs that are going up against the 5600X 3D. Little secret, there's actually three CPUs, but you got to stick around for that. The first up is the Ryzen 5 5600X non-3D. It's also six cores and 12 threads, but boosts up to 4.6 gigahertz. It also only comes with 32 megabytes of L3 cache. The next processor on the list is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. It's eight cores and 16 threads and boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz. Again, it has 96 megabytes of L3 cache like the 5600X 3D. Allow me to give you a quick walkthrough of the test bench setup I used for all these CPUs. For the motherboard, I've got the MSI MAG B550 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi with 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z Royal clocked at 3600 megahertz and a Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD. For the graphics card, I've got the MSI RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio. No bottleneck here. Powering the system is the Fantex Revolt X 1000 watt power supply. Lastly, to cool all these CPUs, I went with a large style air cooler rather than liquid cooling. So you can expect this to be the worst performance you can see out of these CPUs. The one I went with is the Montec Metal DT24 Premium Air Cooler. Big thanks to Montec for sending this over to use on our test bench. Now this is just game testing, nothing extra, simply gaming. I tested four games in total. I went with Apex Legends, Forza Horizon 5, Cyberpunk 2077, and the all popular Fortnite. I made three test runs for each game, mostly on high settings, and no ray tracing was used other than in Forza that enables it by default when using the high preset. I ran the tests in 1080p and 1440p. Oh, no upscaling technology was used either. The first game up was Apex Legends. Tests were run on the high preset. At 1440p, the 5600X came in at 275 FPS average with its X3D version hitting pretty much the same. I didn't expect the difference from the 5800X 3D, but here we are with about a 20 FPS increase. Dropping the resolution down to 1080p sees all the CPUs hit the game engine limit of 300 FPS. The small difference you see is run to run variance. 
let's move on to something a little more demanding. Forza Horizon 5 is next using the high preset as well, which also enables ray tracing set to medium. At 1440p, the X3D chips both hit over 200 FPS, and I was impressed with how the Ryzen 5 version was able to beat the Ryzen 7. I'm as confused as you are, but I tested each game five times instead of three, and I verified the settings between every run. I also exited the game and came back into it to verify that the settings had taken effect. 1080p was more the same, with the 5600X falling just below the 200 FPS number, and the 5600X 3D beating the Ryzen 7 once again. One thing that could correlate to this is heat. When you have more CPU cores, you create more heat on the CPU die, and therefore the 5600X doesn't create as much heat as the 5800X 3D, so it's able to achieve higher boost clock numbers. Cyberpunk 2077 was up next, using the high presets once again. At 1440p resolution, the 5600X was beat as expected, but the wild part is the 5600X 3D once again beat the 5800X 3D with 175.2 to its 159 FPS. Switching over to 1080p didn't change anything with almost the exact same scores. Please remember, I'm not a benchmarking expert. I'm just like all of you, a simple gamer. I just have the hardware to test to show you what you can expect. So if you pop your system together, boot it up, set your XMP and wanna play your games, this is what you can expect to see. The last game in my test was Fortnite. These settings are more complicated because when I enable high presets, it turns on a bunch of other stuff that tanks performance. Therefore, I disabled Nanite and Lumen, set the render scale to 100% and TSR to medium. 1440p was first once again with the 5600X hitting 185.6 FPS average. The X3D CPU showed quite a jump in performance with 236.3 for the 5600X 3D and 238.7 for the Ryzen 7. Stepping down to 1080p didn't change much. The 5600X hit just over 200 FPS, while the X3D chips both achieved 266. Now I told you I was gonna give you a little bit of bonus content, and this is it. I wanted to run something else against the 5600X 3D. So I decided to grab something from the AM5 platform, and it's the Ryzen 5 7600X. I decided this because it's about the same price as the 5600X 3D now. I'm not even gonna bother showing you Apex Legends because these three CPUs were able to hit the game engine limit of 300 FPS. This is more of the same. So let's move right on to Forza Horizon 5. The 7600X achieves slightly above the 5600X 3D at 238.3 FPS average. The AM5 processor does see much better 1% lows than both AM4 CPUs. At 1080p, this continues with the 7600X hitting 256.9 FPS to the 5600X 3D's 241.5. Not much difference, but it does have a little bit of an edge. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 5600X 3D and 7600X are very closely matched at 1440p, with the 5600X doing slightly better at 175.2 versus 171.9. 1080p isn't much different with both CPUs coming within 2 FPS. Once again, the AM5 CPU shows better 1% lows. Fortnite is super close too. All three CPUs displayed pretty much the same performance at both 1080p and 1440p. Battle Royales are tough to benchmark since they can show changes in performance due to player and map differences. Turns out the gaming performance of the 5600X 3D is on par and sometimes better than the 5800X 3D for $100 less. However, my final thoughts kind of negate all of my testing today because I can't honestly recommend the 5600X 3D. It's kind of a niche product if you ask me. I love that AMD is trying to reuse bad CPUs to make good ones and get them out to consumers that have that awesome gaming performance from the 3 dv cache. However, being that it's only available at Micro Center, which is only in the US and it's only in store, so you can't ship it if you're not close enough to the store, that makes it a very limited audience. Honestly, if you're a current AM4 user and you're on like Ryzen 2000 or 3000 series or even Ryzen 5000, the lower end models, a 5800X 3D would be a great upgrade. 
I recommend the 5800X3D over the 5600X3D because it gives you a bump in not only gaming performance, but an overall better computing experience due to its extra cores and threads. And it's available pretty much everywhere, like Amazon and Newegg, not limited to in-store in US only. Now, I don't like to use the word future-proofing, but honestly, the Ryzen 7 is gonna give you a better overall experience and last you into the future longer than the Ryzen 5 will. Now, my caveat to the whole thing is, skip AM4 if you're building a new PC. Go with AM5. Something like the 7600X is a great idea to start a platform on. As you saw in my performance benchmarks, it gets pretty much the same result as a 5800X 3D, and it costs less too and then you've given yourself an upgrade path later because you can always upgrade to a 7800X 3D down the road when prices drop. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more PC parts comparisons, don't forget to give us a like down below and subscribe for more tech-related content. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one. Why am I the only one who's feeling this pain when there should be two